Hey guys, this is Jeremy. I'm just going to give you a quick tutorial on how to do um, how to use the sound equipment. So if for some reason I'm not around, this is something you can refer to. First thing you're going to notice is we moved the, the location of the soundboard. It was back here. So we changed the chairs around a little bit and moved it over to the corner. We also moved that table and put the uh, tablecloth on it and move the things that were in the windowsill out. Um, I'll just walk across here and then we'll look at the sound bar. I put the mics on these low stands just because I think it works really best when those mics are handheld um, and we did the cords so that they're hopefully not going to be in the way as much. This is the stage monitor. It's got two 10 inch uh, woofers and tweeters in there. All these speakers that you have now are amplified, and so they have their own volume and power button. So you always want to turn your loudspeakers on last and turn them off first before you turn off the... And we also changed the way these connect on the back. You're going to uh, always go in the, into that channel one, and also you'll notice the gain knob. Um, in this small room, you really can't turn the volume up. Um, I'm not even halfway turned up because it just gets way too loud in here. So that's what we did on that speaker. Come across here quickly, try not to have too much fluff time. So same thing with this speaker. You want to make sure you're in that first channel because these are powered, they're working as uh, mono line devices and we're also turning the Bluetooth off and I'll show you the reason we're doing the Bluetooth off Okay, stop Okay, David helped so much with um, Putting these black some of these are shower curtains and some of these are black tablecloths But um, it helps hide all those wires because there are a ton of wires on this sound desk Anyway, so what we did, this is a Denon uh, professional grade Bluetooth receiver and it's got this little uh, antenna that's a got a magnet It's just attached there but it could go farther if we needed to. There's a pair button on the front. The gain needs to stay almost all the way up where it is here. You just press and hold that for three seconds and then it shows up and you compare to it. And then uh, to disconnect the, that person, you hold it for three seconds, it kicks them off. If it's sl blinking slow like it is now, that means nothing's connected to it. After you hold it, it'll blink fast until somebody pairs with it, and then it'll be solid green, and that's how you know it's paired. So coming out of that, that goes into the soundboard on this channel. On the back of your soundboard, we have your mics. So the first two are your wired mics. The next two are your wireless mics that go into your wireless receiver right here. And then we have the two outs that go to your loudspeakers and then the two auxiliaries and then one of the auxiliaries goes to that stage monitor that's one of your auxiliaries the other auxiliary is going to go over here to your focus right and that's what we're going to use uh, for the audio for cameras on your wireless cameras I went ahead and labeled um, which one is which on the the blue and the black mic those gains need to stay in about the two o'clock position and the uh, that outputs into the board where your first two channels are the wired mics and then the next two are the wireless the wired mics require more gain because they don't have anything helping them your uh, wireless mics are getting boost from that box so they don't require uh, much gain I'm going to stop. We'll do a video just about this board. Okay, here's your sound board. This is the Yamaha MGP-12X mixing console. Uh, this came from Guitar Center. It's about 10 years old. It's a hybrid analog and digital sound board, meaning it has uh, some analog capabilities, and it's got two channels that have the digital stuff. It also has some built-in effects. And uh, I sent Rob a, a YouTube playlist that explains everything. 
But what I've done is labeled everything on here. Your sure mic one, your sure mic two, the black mic, the blue mic, um, the Bluetooth sound, and then your main speakers, this main slider right here. Goes to the main speakers, and then this is your your aux two and your aux one. These are your, your master auxes. One is for the stage monitor, and one's for OBS. So um, when it comes to sound equipment, the, the main goal, I guess, is to get all the signals from all the channels to come in with a decent line level. So you want them to average around zero on the, on the meter. Most of the time they're below. If they go above, that's called clipping and that's not good. So you want all the signal to come in here so that whenever you have the headphones on and you want to hit these buttons here where you want to just listen to one channel at a time through the headphones to make sure it sounds good, it doesn't blow you away because relatively all the channels are, are at the same volume. So then you can use the faders to do the fine tuning and say, okay, this mic is a little loud. You can bring it down a little bit. You really don't want to boost things. You really want it to, to trim them back. So we use the gain knobs up here to set the, the levels, which I've already done. And then we've got the master fader here that if we want to fade it out, we can fade it, you know, gradually. And then we have these two knobs. One of this is going to control this, I said that stage speaker over there so that the, the vocalist can hear themselves. An important thing to note is channels have to be turned on. And this little red button here that says ST means send it to the stereo mix. So those have to be pushed, these red buttons, so that the sound goes over here. And then it can control. And then, of course, the main one has to be on. If you turn that off, there's nothing goes to the speakers. And then, of course, your FX. And I just turned a little bit of reverb on for the mics. Not too much, because too much, and it sounds like a special effect. And you don't really want, you might want a little bit of help, but you don't want a special effect. And the compressor, I started with just a little bit of compressor. We can decide if we need to adjust that. It just really depends on who's doing the singing, if they need that or not. And then the only EQ, I messed with the EQ for the Bluetooth because there was a frequency in here that didn't sound very good. So I, I'm, I'm taking out that one frequency so the speakers sound better. Um, and then of course the FX have to be turned on if you want to use effects and the sliders have to be up. So in order for sound to be used, you've got a couple of things. The channel has to be on, the fader has to be up, there has to be sufficient gain, and then you can hear it out the speakers. But we're maintaining these two auxiliary channels. These don't care about the EQ and they don't care about all this fancy, they just send the levels through. So um, that's important whenever we start sending stuff over to OBS through your focus right. So the other thing I was telling Rob is on this board, you'll see a little, the little white triangles. And the white triangles are like the default setting. So we, we adjust the gains up here so that all these can be pretty much set on zero or what they call unity is zero. It means we're not boosting it and we're not taking away from it. So if we use this, so that we can mostly leave everything, at leave the main one at zero, leave everything here at zero, and it sounds good in the room. Um, we've kind of done our job, and then we can make the fine tweaks and fine tuning. Now, ultimately, the, the amount of loudness in the room is controlled by the volume on the loudspeaker. So you really have three places. You've got this speaker, that speaker, and the one on the, on the floor. So those are, those are the master controls of how loud stuff gets. So you kind of want to adjust that to the loudest you ever want it to be. And then we can pull it down here. Or adjust it to where it sounds great, leave all this stuff on zero, adjust the knobs there till you get the, the loudness the way you like it. We're not blowing everybody away. And then you can make fine tuning. But that's, that's the whole process of setting this up. Like I said, I sent Rob a lot of videos this looks a lot different than it did. We were up here at about 10 o'clock the other night getting, uh, getting it cleaned up and trying to get the cords where you can walk around. And then whenever it's time for ministry time and you move the podium, 
you have to move the podium back you have to move the stands back but then you can just you know turn off that uh, stage monitor and, and move it back and then it'll be out of the way and then I think I think we still have sufficient space uh, for ministry time but I just wanted to let you guys know talk to you later one last thing uh, David thought it might be a good idea to make these temporary covers for the glass just keep people from looking in from the outside he just put some contact hooks up here they're clear <clears throat> and those shower curtains can hang there can easily take them down put them up or if you don't like them we can get rid of them but after we did all that setup we decided to put those on just to keep people from looking in